Hey folks, it's George Leoniak here, back with New Geometry. Happy to have you join me here today. And uh, before we jump into this video, just uh, one quick announcement. I've got another video that's uh, in New Conversations um, that if you're a subscriber might not have come through your feed. I did a presentation on the blossoming of the flower of life in a new era for the Rose Center. So check out that video. It's down in the, uh, the bottom of the uh, New Conversations section in the playlists. Um, but today I've got a really uh, special uh, presentation that's all about furthering on the flower of life type of pattern. Uh, as you know, if you checked out my other videos, I've really been engaged with the uh, seed of life phi based circle drawings. And this week I've really tried to con condense that into a really manageable type of drawing that's going to produce all sorts of amazing uh, platonic solids and stellated forms from just a simple root pattern. So we're going to have to go back and address a lot of things. And this one, uh, you know, is going to stir up maybe a little bit of uh, potential controversy. It's certainly not the intention, but I'm calling this uh, drawing the Eve's icosahedron. And for a variety of number of reasons, which I'll get into into the video, but let's just jump into this uh, and describe it from the top. So here is the, uh, the root circle patterns that I've been doing. So, you know, we've got a lot of different drawings that enter into patterns of creation. Like we could draw patterns from square orientation view or pentagonal view. And these are both from what I call the kind of six fold symmetry, the hexagonal type of view. Now, of course, the seed of life is right here within these central six circles within this fruit of life, flower of life motif, which so many of us are familiar with. And of course, it's made up of the 61 you know, inner circles here and 62 total if we account the outer one. Now, this is a pattern over here on the, that's been really the, developing for me for quite a while now. This uh, golden circle seed of life is what I am now calling it because of all these circles, We've got 21 circles, and even the 22nd circle plays an important part into the overall design. So this pattern here um, has been producing some beautiful imagery of all the platonic solids, which we'll get into throughout this. But all these are in phi based relationship. There's three level of circles. So we've got 21 total, you know, if we add up the seven times uh, three. So, uh, you know, I, I, another way to think about this is that the, uh, the golden circles and the silver circles, the larger outer ones or the bronze circles, you can add a bunch of uh, metallic names to these if you'd like to. Okay, so now this is where we're gonna really get into the, uh, the meat of the subject here, you know, because this whole week uh, I've been really asking the question, not just to myself, but a number of uh, other, other people on my path here right now who are helping me out with sacred geometry about what they think about this Eve's icosahedron, right? Because early on I was like, I knew this pattern was gonna represent something special. And I knew it contained a pattern similar to Metatron's cube, uh, which is over here. And of course, Metatron being the, uh, the arch, archangel Metatron, who was Enoch, who transformed into Metatron, right? So Enoch is, uh, you know, was 365 years old. He is the great grandfather of Noah. He trans, you know, God took him up on his chariot into uh, transform him into the archangel Metatron. And the Metatron's cube is often ascribed to uh, uh, Metatron. So I was like, maybe I'll call this drawing Enoch's icosahedron. Now, this is really an open-ended question. I'm calling it this Eve's icosahedron because of the feminine principle that's associated with the water element and that this, uh, the, the quality of the phi-based circles and the nature and the life that's associated with this and that it actually draws the five platonic solids all accurately uh, just seems like a, a, a great way to honor the feminine principle with this balancing the masculine and feminine. Of course, we have the circles and the straight lines. Now, Metatron's cube, in many of my videos, I pointed out that we are drawing in all those images, incorrect renderings of the icosahedron and dodecahedron. I've taken the measurements on it. This pretty much will lock you into just producing octahedrons, cubes, the cube octahedron, the tetrahedron, 
it's very well suited for uh, crystallography, for instance, the way originally uh, before quasi crystals that were all based on cubic nature. So of course the cube was so fundamental. Of course, there's one cube associated with this. And, and later on, I'm gonna show you how this pattern is gonna produce five cubes easily. So um, let's just talk a little bit more on Metatron. Now, the history of Metatron's cube could go way, way back in history, but let's just go across a couple sources that I've come across is that, uh, you know, this, this drawing of Metatron's cube has often been uh, attributed to Fibonacci, the same person who gave us the Fibonacci sequence, Leonardo de Pisa, and he's the one who uh, seemed to have formally coined the name Metatron's cube within this. And actually the dodecahedron that was drawn in this, I don't believe he even drew it at that time. I believe Gianvalo Melchizedek was the first person with, who wrote the ancient secret of the flower of life who created the dodecahedron in this, you know, a few hours before a workshop as the story goes, as it's written in his book. And that was only 20 years ago. So how ancient is this symbol? I'm not sure. The, of course, the pattern of the flower life goes back and is inscribed on all sorts of imagery all over the place, but so is the seed of life. Now, this is an enhancement with these five base circles. Both of these two drawings, amazingly, both have 39 lines. And this one, as I'm going to pull all the pieces out of this drawing in a little bit, contains the dodecahedron, icosahedron. They're already in here perfectly drawn, um, and I'll, I'll show you in a moment. So let's skip on to the next slide just to get a kind of close-up image of this form. Now, this is uh, going to be a stellated dodecahedron, a small stellated dodecahedron. This is all going to become clear in a moment. But these are the five base circles, and you can see how all the uh, stars and the angles of these uh, the, the triangles are kind of bent in to create this kind of uh, shape in the middle here. So this is how the, the underlying formation of the correct way to draw the icosahedron and dodecahedron. So, uh, you know, I've taken a little bit step further and I've added an additional 30 lines into the center. All these lines are gonna make perfect sense to you by the end of this. Uh, it's 69 lines total within this drawing and you know, I just want the geometry to kind of uh, speak for itself here. So if you're not resonating with Eve's icosahedron or Enoch's icosahedron or uh, Leoniac's icosahedron or uh, whatever you'd like to call this, um, you know, just let's just have the geometry show you the difference between what this little pattern of the 30, 69 lines here does with the geometry. Okay, so... First of all, let's just start on the outside of the form and we could easily draw in the icosahedron. All the points are given to us within the original line drawing. So no new, uh, you know, line. well, actually we're adding these on for the outer icosahedron, but we're just connecting the dots that are already there. And these are gonna be kind of quick slides. There's no reason to, for me to uh, belabor the point. We'll just go through them quick. We'll keep this a nice short and sweet video for you. So, uh, so underneath that, each of these points that I just showed you that made up the icosahedron in the previous one actually is the small stellated dodecahedron. So right away within this pattern, we're getting these stellated uh, forms, which previously in the, uh, the, the fruit of life version of this, the Metatron's cube, we don't get these stellated forms at all because they're not in the correct phi proportion to create the icosahedron and dodecahedron. We might draw, be able to draw them inaccurately, but this is the correct way to render it specifically that is in relationship to how it's uh, drawn accurately. So these are the points, and these would just create the icosahedron around it. So it's a small stellated dodecahedron that is, um, I'll show you this at the end of the uh, video here. This is the small stellated dodecahedron inside the icosahedron here. So yeah, all the points are in there. And as we continue to go in further, let's just take off the stellation points and I'll show you specifically where the dodecahedron is. It's within the central hexagon, which is in the bigger phi, biggest phi circle we have here that's part of the seed of life pattern. 
And then we just connect it to the smaller one here and we go around and then we've got our dodecahedron in here. Now we've got that at kind of multiple scales and that's the beauty of this design is that it is fractal just like uh, Metatron's cube is that it produces the cube at multiple scales and you could put cubes together. Uh, but this pattern is kind of like an expanse of infl inflating of uh, icosahedron all the way out to larger and larger dodeca and icosahedrons from the central point. So, um, okay, so that's uh, the version of the dodecahedron as a solid. We could do the backside of it too if we wanted to. Um, the, uh, the next drawing here is the uh, five cubes in the dodecahedron. Now remember, Metatron's cube, singular cube, is a kind of a straight on view. And in, in previous videos, I said that this might be a, like a kind of a little bit of a tilt to a lot of people who have studied this drawing because now the icosahedron and the dodecahedron are straight on to you where the cube and the uh, octahedron and tetrahedrons are gonna be turned a little bit. But this is really cool because the, um, I have another form, I'll put a little line up, I'll show you. Each one of these pentagon stars, the pentagrams in each of these dodecahedron faces are actually uh, one face of a cube. So there's five cubes in this. So this design, the Ezecosahedron produces the five cubes that are, each of these are aligned. And I'm gonna show you where each of those are as I kind of dissect this. This is if we're looking through the whole thing. Um, so you could see the backside of the cube as well. Uh, here I've removed the, uh, the decahedron lines. These are just really quick to look at. You could pause the uh, image if you wanna study that a little more. Now notice we haven't got into all the gray lines into the middle. So everything can be found in, right now in the original drawing that I was showing you without the more complex 39, 30 lines at the end. So here are the five cubes in the dodecahedron. And we could see that uh, we have two that are from the hexagonal orientation, one, two. And then we have two that are just long uh, rectangle uh, shapes with one line. So picture these as solid cubes. And if we put all those cubes back together, remember I've just isolated one of each of the five cubes, which is so cool. We get these different views, at least this view of the cube, uh, which we don't see in Met the Metatron's cube, but picture that just coming all back together to make the full framework of the dodecahedron from this view. And it's just accurately, beautifully rendered in this design. Let's go in a little further to, uh, I'll just show you where all the platonic solids are within this pattern. Uh, we had the tetrahedron view here. We've got five tetrahedrons that would be in the cube. This is one view of it. I uh, see it's gonna go up to where the dodecahedron corners would be. Uh, and then we have the other one, and this would be as if it's, the tetrahedron is pointing straight up towards you. And of course we can then still create our classic uh, Merkaba type of view of the star tetrahedron. The only difference is, is that it's just tilted, but you see this all fits into like the larger nested geometries that are going on here. They're not, this is not separate from the dodecahedron, icosahedron. For instance, we could make this star tetrahedron out of the large star pattern that we see here. But remember, that's the, that's the small stellated dodecahedron. So even though we could draw that there, if we did that, all the rest of the geometry would start to uh, not make sense. We would lose all the connections. It would become a disconnected uh, view from every other part in the, the, the pattern. But we, we could draw it that way if we like. So this is where it gets really cool because now once again, we're gonna get another great stellated dodecahedron. And, and there's a lot of stellated forms in here. I'm just showing you the most obvious ones, uh, but I've spent a lot of time. I found probably five or six other. I found all the, uh, the Kepler point set stellated versions that, he, that they've done. And uh, this one is another one of the Kepler point set ones, which now is also an icosahedron at the center of this. I'm about to get to that one. But you could see that those points are just coming out and connecting and creating the outline of the dodecahedron, the larger dodecahedron that it was around. And this comes up with this, uh, you know, uh, 12, uh, 20 pointed form. 
So another awesome stellated form that's just drawn within all the lines. And this is why I added in the extra 30 lines in the middle, because they're all part of the creation of these further forms as we go in, creating smaller nested phi circles within. It's a very, there, there's so much richness in this. There's so much more that you're able to discover on your own. Because every time I revisit these drawings, I'm always coming out with something new uh, to bring back and share with you here on these videos. Um, so we also have here uh, the octahedron. So this is the, the last of the platonic solids that uh, is in, nested in here. And it, yes, it is in with the lines. You could follow the lines in this smaller uh, last 30 lines that I added in here will give you the outer hexagon and the triangular faces. And of course, there are two views of this. This view uh, here doesn't actually line up as well. You have to draw in the other cube and the tetrahedron to get that view. So this one was a little more complex for the lines, but we do get this standard view, which is if we back up to the star tetrahedron, that would be right of what all these uh, tetrahedrons are built off of that central octahedron in that drawing. So there you go. You've got all those five platonic solids there. And inside this uh, form here is the icosahedron, okay? And I'm gonna do a whole other uh, video on this one that I'm pretty excited about because the icosahedron is inside the, uh, the uh, octahedron and it's just twisted a little bit. And there's a lot more that I'm gonna describe on that one. But like I said, I'm not gonna go into it too much on that, but it's part of the internal work of the octahedron. And here we go. Here's that. Finally, we're kind of gone further and further in to get the icosahedron again. Now, there are multiple icosahedron drawings in here, so uh, there's many levels of it. But from the outer one to the inner, this is the smallest one. And then those are what those kind of stellated points were coming off of to create the dodecahedron. So here's the uh, the large outer icosahedron and the smaller inner one. We've got that nice uh, holographic thing going on. And of course, if we continue on creating larger phi circles, we'll expand that out to the next level. And now I've got something really uh, special for you because icosahedron can be stellated 59 different ways, right? There's a lot of different stellations. I don't know if this drawing will produce all of them. It's doing quite a lot of them, but I was really happy about this one, and this will be also another video coming up too. This is the final stellation of the icosahedron. It's called the echidnahedron, basically because of that spiny little anteater that's all spiky. And this drawing, the phi circle pattern that I was just showing you, all the vertices uh, that we need, and there's 60 vertices showing up in this pattern, they're all found within this circle pattern. So this phi circle drawing is just mind blowing when I was mind blowing for me, and hopefully for you too. And hopefully this is something you will really want to experiment because this is something you need to kind of experience on your own. You need to kind of sit with this and do the drawing to really feel what it feels like in your own being compared to what you may have been drawing in sacred geometry before. Um, not to discredit those things, we could blend everything together, but also just expand and try something new out and see how this is. This is a very complex drawing. Uh, it it will, might take a little more to figure out, but it is clustered. There are clusters of five, pentagon shapes. And this, we're going to revisit the golden hexagon again. If we connected these lines, it'd be the golden hexagon. And it, it, it's actually internal structure of this form that I talked about in the golden hexagon video a long time ago. We have more on that coming up soon. So that is just a, a, a really a incredible overview of what this, uh, this pattern presents. But like I said, it's only just scratching the surface of what is available and what you may be able to find on your own. For instance, just extending these lines in the icosahedron went out to the outer seat of life. I have a whole video on this, the nine-pointed star, and gave me a nine-pointed star to 99.8 or 99.9 .9 accuracy 
just from stellating, uh, just from extending the lines of the icosahedron that's at the center of this, right? So you could explore that. And even this, this is, this is so cool because in the same drawing that we have here, I haven't changed any of the phi circles at all, same three level of phi circles, we can actually switch over to another perspective without even changing our drawing, no new drawing technique at all. We, we could switch right over to the Pentagon view, which then presents the five pointed star from above. So basically we went from uh, this view, which this is the triangular hexagonal view, right? With the equilateral triangle and just in the same isocosahedron drawing of the phi base circles, let's just say the golden circles for this, the, uh, we've got the same uh, icosahedron just showing up with the dodecahedron at the center. And of course, we could then do all the platonic solids within this. No two drawings, same method, all from one drawing. So just really uh, a neat transition. And I thought I'd just end with this one, you know, because I wanted to mention a little bit about Eve's icosahedron, the forbidden fruit, right? That's kind of maybe the provocative thing within this. It, 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 remember, this, this fruit, when we cut the uh, apple in half, we will get a transverse cut that will give us a pentagon right at the middle. It just happens to be in the middle, this, uh, this pentagon, pentagram shape. Here's our drawing that I just showed you right over the apple. So of course the apple in that story was the forbidden fruit. And here is the icosahedral symmetry around the apple itself, right? But is this our rise? Is this a, is this our fall or is this our rise? You know, is this patterns like this really the thing that breaks us out of the box? You know, lets us embrace the the unknown uh, and not be fearful of it. So these are the types of questions that this contemplative side of sacred geometry. Uh, enters into. And, and one other thing that really kind of pushed me over the edge in going with the Eve's icosahedron is that in geometry itself, at least in crystallography, the, uh, the icosahedron is known as the forbidden symmetry. It's actually called the forbidden symmetry because all the crystallography books they didn't want to have anything to do with icosahedral symmetry. It wasn't until 1980, very recently, that Daniel Schechtman had found that there was quasi-crystals, and these are actually showing up in nature and in meteorites. It wasn't until then that they had to rewrite all this, and he was the laughing stock because he was proposing a whole new uh, way of looking at nature, and the cosmos was with icosahedral symmetry, which was forbidden. It was a forbidden structure. It was as it was called. And then it turned into something that is revolutionizing how we, what we think about nature. And I, and I believe that this pattern, let me just go way back to the beginning. This pattern over here, like whatever we call it, it's just representing Eve's icosahedron now to me to balance out the kind of technological uh, orientation and domination we've had over the nature and the feminine principle and bringing those things into greater balance, uh, this Eve's icosahedron is bringing in that forbidden icosahedral symmetry and actually correcting it from a pattern that didn't actually produce those. Now, Enoch's icosahedron works uh, you know, just as good for me, but one last little caveat and then I'll move off from the slides and show you some of the forms is that in the story of this family lineage and tree, of course, Adam, uh, Eve, Eve was created from Adam. And then, you know, Eve produced, they produced these children, and then they had children. And Enoch is one of those children. So if it were not for Eve, Enoch, you know, uh, there would be no Enoch to ascend, you know, to be the Metatron. Now, these platonic solids have been around for age, you know, since the beginning of creation. So, you know, how does that relate to uh, these stories that are in the re religious uh, doctrine? I'm not sure, but all I know is that the resonance of this form here 
and the, the, the qualities that it presents and how it corrects a lot of the things that are going on with this form just seems timely. And I think it's a great lead into a lot of uh, open-ended conversations that bring us into more uncomfortable terrain. Like how do we treat these sacred geometry symbols and forms? How do we balance the technology of the hexagon view with the life force energy of the pentagon and the fire ratio? How do these things blend together? And how does that shift and affect our consciousness? And the most important part of that is how we relate with one another lovingly and compassionately, and that we have open hearts, you know, and, uh, and that come from a wise, loving, wisdom-oriented place. Uh, you know, how does it address those issues? And, and it really gets to, because this story of this Adam and Eve, you know, I, I, before coming on here, I was thinking, geez, you know, when I was uh, in Bible study as a young child, you know, you, you show up and all of a sudden they say you fell from grace. <laughs> you know, you were kicked out of the garden, you know, and I'm looking around at everybody like, oh, geez, you know, we're kicked out of the garden, you know, and that's what we're being told from young children. Uh, does that instill a sense of separation from source? How does that pan out into the big picture things when we feel we're separate from our creator or separate from source like those are big deep rooted issues and i don't believe eve's icosahedron will solve all that but maybe it's an entry point in to reconsider uh the importance of how this might be our rise to a new level of consciousness rather than staying in a fallen uh accepting a fallen state so, okay, anyway, there's a lot we could discuss on that. I look forward to hearing more of your comments on that. And uh, please check out the geometry of just what it is on its own and see if it opens up these philosophical conversations for yourself. So much love and appreciation and happy holidays, everyone. Oh, and I almost forgot, maybe if you're still with me, um, if you are, you'll be able to see this amazing form that I uh, created. This is the... Uh, a kidnahedron. So yeah, this is my uh, happy holiday uh, Christmas star of the final uh, uh, stellation of the icosahedron with the 60 points, just a colorful starburst. Here's the, uh, the pentagon sided faces. And uh, yeah, I forgot to do the little show and tell here. Here's the, uh, the close up of this one, the small dodeca in there, uh, stellated dodeca, and as well as the uh, icosahedron around it. And here's the other uh, dodecahedron with the cube edges with the pentagon star. So yes, let these images uh, soak in and uh, look forward to seeing you next time, probably in the new year. And until then, much love and happy holidays, everyone. Peace. <laughs>